Welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Drone. I'm super excited today because uh, yesterday I received from DHL all the way from Helipal in China um, the 120 class Micro Atom V2 Storm Racer. This little guy you can see is, is tiny compared to the uh, original Storm. It's the Atom 120 class. Um, it has a carbon fiber frame, which is pretty awesome. It has brushless motors. Um, it runs clean flight. It's got a built-in uh, 200 milliwatt transmitter so for FPV, and it takes 4S batteries. So, I mean, you want to talk about some get up and go. This big guy takes 3S batteries, so this is a 600 milliwatt hour, 14.8 uh, volt um, 4S battery. Now, one small thing, complaint that I have, um, Helipal, I've ordered from them several times and I like it because you get a lot of updates via email that tell you when stuff's gonna arrive. Um, but one complaint is the battery actually is an uh, XT30 connector, which is half the size of the XT60. So this is, this is uh, the XT60 on my uh, original Storm Racer and the XT30. And why that was a problem is because I don't have any way to charge this. They send you a charger, but they don't send you an adapter for this, for um, the banana plugs. So what they sent me was the connector for the XT60 and not the XT30. Um, I ordered one. You can find them online anywhere from two or three bucks to 10 bucks, depending on where you order it from. Uh, but unfortunately, I was not able to charge these batteries completely because they, um, I just have no way of charging them with my charger until I get that XT30 connector. So if you do order this, be sure you order XT30 connectors that you can charge these batteries with. The other thing that was a little bit um, unusual was that I actually flew this yesterday um, and I broke a prop already. <laughs> I ran into the fence. It's got a lot of get up and go, a lot of power. I tried it in the uh, uh, rate mode, which is the hardest way to fly it and that ended with me crashing into a fence and breaking the prop, as I said. The thing I had trouble with yesterday was actually attaching the battery onto the, the drone. Now, the way that you see it done in the pictures on uh, the website and in the instructions is it goes on the bottom and it just, you know, the connector goes right here and you use these straps. Well, the problem is these straps, one strap is not actually long enough to go all the way around and uh, loop back on itself all the way around the body of this thing. So I figured out that you have to actually uh, wrap two of these straps together, which is not a huge deal. I managed to do that without any trouble. Um, but just be aware if you're frustrated when you put it on that you actually have to wrap two of these together. That's pretty good. And I'll put this other one on the battery itself. This is about the same length as the actual battery. So now, when I put that on there, it will sort of stay, but you're still going to need to put a strap around it. So after much, much uh, experimentation, got that one on, that one's clear, and the back two are clear. So putting the battery on is a bit of a challenge. So a couple more things about this quad. Um, it weighs 145 grams without the battery, 218 grams with the battery. That means you don't need to put your um, uh, FAA registration number on it, which is nice. Um, as I said, carbon fiber frame runs clean flight for its uh, flight in its flight controller. Um, has three modes: angle mode, which is auto leveling; uh, horizon mode, which means that it um, you can do flips and such, but it still auto levels. And then rate mode is no auto leveling at all. It will just fly like an airplane. Um, also the stick, in order to engage the props, you pull the stick down into the right, the uh, left stick, and in order to kill the props down into the left, we'll stop the props. So you can kind of have control of firing them up and killing them. The uh, FPV system is a 20 or a 200 milliwatt transmitter, which should, should give you pretty good uh, vision. I haven't actually flown at FPV yet and the camera is adjustable so you can actually uh, tilt the camera up and down i think there's a little screw you have to loosen i'm going to try it in its default position which seems to be tilted way up because i'm assuming it flies at a bit of an angle forward 
So we'll see how that goes. So let's take it out for a flight and see how it does. Okay, I'm gonna take it up one more time without the goggles. So here are my thoughts on this little guy. Uh, it's a ton of fun to fly, first of all. It is small enough that you really can fly it in a pretty tight spot. This little clove, uh, grove of trees is not someplace I would try to fly my 250 by any means. Um, so it's nice to have something this small and agile to fly around in here. It seems to be pretty strong in terms of its uh, resilience. I crashed it into a couple of trees, I crashed it into a branch, I crashed it into the ground crashed into a fence yesterday. The only thing that I've had break so far is one prop, which is great. Uh, it's also um, not too bad. If you have some FBB experience, it's, it's, uh, it's about as easy to fly as a 250 is. Um, it, the trick I found with it is just to get the right altitude, because it tends to want to, I was kind of bouncing up and down in the air a lot. And I, once I could kind of level it out and just fly it forward, that was much easier. Now the downsides. Um, First of all, this XT30 connector is great. I just wish they had included something I could charge an XT30 battery with. So I had to order that separately, kind of a pain. So now I'm out of batteries. I've flown through four today and have uh, none left until I get that charger. Uh, number two is the fact that the uh, strap here is really difficult to get on and get it just, just right so that it doesn't uh, hit any of the props. I figured it out. I think I doubled up two straps and I think that's working pretty well. Also putting that Velcro on the bottom with the battery helped. Um, so that was kind of a pain. I wish they had thought out the battery placement a little bit better. Maybe a cage or something could go in. 
but I know they're trying to make this thing as light and agile as possible. Uh, and then finally, uh, the fact that it's transmitting the, um, uh, the FPV signal upside down. That's uh, odd. I am hoping that's just a setting somewhere in there. I see the USB connector. I'm going to go try playing with the settings and see if that uh, changes it. Um, I just wore my goggles upside down, which was not a huge deal. It seemed to work. But um, the, the telemetry on the goggles, by the way, is great. You can see how long you've been flying, your, your um, distance, your battery level, all that sort of thing. So would I recommend it? I'm not sure. It's kind of 50-50 for me. I like it. It's fun to fly. I'm going to have to get used to it a little bit more. You know, the flying part is great. It's all the prep stuff um, that I am not a big fan of so far. So I uh, would give it a 5 out of 10 right now. It's uh, worth checking out. I don't know that there's a whole lot of other uh, ready-to-fly um, uh, FPV drones in this in this size and this form factor um, and Helipal does have good service from what I can tell I need to find out about what's happened with that cable and why the uh, signals upside down but all of that said long-winded way of saying I like it I'm just a little frustrated by a few things with it so I think with some more time I'm gonna find out more I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it and I certainly hope you uh, enjoy your FPV racing having a good time doing that. Remember, you don't have to register this guy with the FAA, which is great. And fly safe, have fun, and if you get a chance, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks, and see you next time.